Now then, we had a busy week in the URC and a very good week from an Irish perspective. It must be said, Connacht beat Cardiff 38 points to 19. Final home game for Andy Friend. We had Munster in South Africa, crucial points. Stormers 24, Munster 26. We had an extraordinary Leinster comeback under the circumstances away to the Lions. It finished Lions 36, Leinster 39. And then Ulster in a less dramatic fashion saw off the Dragons at home 40 points to 19. In other news, we have Jacques Nienabar coming to Leinster. We have Scott Fardy pitching up now as Connacht defence coach. And if that's all too good to be true, the Six Nations situation is dragging us back down to earth with a bang. Ireland, afresh from their record defeat against France, suffered a record defeat away to Italy. They have England next, which is a daunting thought. And then we would presume Scotland in round five in what will be a wooden spoon playoff. To discuss all, very happy to say Jerry Thornley of the Irish Times is here in studio. You're very welcome. Thank you, Joe. Pleasure. And Fiona Hayes, Grand Slam winner with us as well. Fiona, you're sick of the side of me. Hello. <laughs> hey, Joe. Jerry, how are you? How you doing? Uh, my weekend is spent eating takeaway, chatting rugby to Fiona <laughs> during matches, you should know. Um, so we'll get all, we'll get on to that later on. Uh, Jacques Nienabar, this is bloody interesting, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it? Kept quiet as well. Very quiet. Apparently he was going to break in South Africa. That's why they, they made their announcement on Saturday. It was an unusual day to make an announcement like this. Okay. Match day. But uh, yeah, I must admit, I was shocked when I first saw it. Jacques Nienabar, really? For a couple of reasons. Number one, he's leaving... A head coaching role, supposedly, anyway, with Razzie there as overlord, but um, a head coaching role with the reigning World Cup champions to become basically work under Leo Cullen at Leinster, which means Leinster are replacing one former international head coach in Stuart Lancaster with another in Jack Nienaber. And they also have, lest we forget, um, a member of the former member of the Crusaders coaching staff, probably the best club side in the Southern Hemisphere in Andrew Goodman as well. So this just shows you Leinster are now an elite brand in global rugby below test level and this reaffirms that in a major way it's an odd one at first when you think of it like because the brand of rugby Munster play the brand of rugby that the Springboks play and we particularly associated with the Lions series is the polar opposite of the kind of brand of rugby that Ireland and Leinster are playing but I guess he's an adaptable coach and will look to uh, it'd be interesting what kind of remit exactly he will have I would imagine Andrew Goodman's got a fair bit of a role too along with Nienbar and then you've got Sean O'Brien maybe having a bigger role too I don't know but so you would think that um, he's been attracted it's a very interesting way for him to go he, he certainly brings a lot of in IP from the South African rugby and the South Africans have come over the horizon now and are with us for some time to come so I think that might have been a factor that he has got such inside knowledge of South African the, the franchises that Lens are going to be coming up against in the URC and potentially in the Champions Cup as well in years to come so there's that he's got a working knowledge of Irish rugby through being in Munster so he does tick an awful lot of boxes it's uh, certainly a very eye-catching announcement you'd imagine the whole of global rugby went wow yeah You'd love to know how it came about as well because I know Alan Quinlan was saying on this morning's AM show that Nienabar, and I think Razi, but certainly Nienabar's family really loved Ireland, really sad to leave. Mm. And so maybe that's part of the attraction. I don't know if he reached out to them or they reached out to him or how these things happen. Fiona, when he was at Munster, his MO and his reputation was certainly built as defensive guru. Yeah, he d definitely done a lot for Munster defence in those times. It's it's such a coup for Leinster, and especially I suppose now that he's he's gone on to head coach role in South Africa, it's going to be immense for them having him in there and having that inside knowledge on South African rugby. He's such a he's such a good character to have around the place as well. You know what I mean? I I've only heard people talk highly of him down in Munster, and he he really kind of he promotes the game, but it's it's that physicality, that aspect of the game you can really see it in his coaching. Style. He also brings a different voice, doesn't he? I can't remember Leinster having a South African coach on their book. They delved quite heavily into New Zealand over the years and a little bit of Australia, but uh, mostly New Zealand, but very rarely South Africa. I can't think of a South African assistant coach that's worked on the ticket. So he'll bring a different voice, different perspective as well, I guess that's going to be interesting for them. Yeah. I'm curious for your thoughts, Jerry, on the division of labour. So at the moment, you look at the Leinster website. Head coach is Leo Cullen. They have Stuart Lancaster very much as senior, senior coach. coach. I don't know, is Nina Bar going in as... 
Well, the statement said he's going in as a replacement for Lancaster, so I presume his title will be senior coach. OK. They have Andrew Goodman, who you mentioned as assistant coach, yeah. looking after the attack, as we understand it, yeah. replacement for Contepomi. Mm-hmm. Robin McBride is also an assistant coach, yeah. forwards and scrum. And Sean O'Brien is a contact skills coach. So if Neanabar is going in very much as, uh, well, you can now look after the defence, mm-hmm. this does elevate the hold that Andrew Goodman has on, on the core of Leinster, their attack, I suppose, in some respects. He was a Leinster player, people will remember, 2012 to 14, where he won 12 caps for Leinster. He retired in 15. He was backs coach to the Crusaders in 21. A New Zealand native played at 10 or centre and he replaced Contepomi. So, as I would understand it, as most people would understand it, Stuart Lancaster's fingerprints are all over the Leinster attack and have been for numerous years. So if he's going out and the Enabar is coming in, unless the Enabar has got some genius attacking credentials that he kept uh, hidden away during his time at Munster in South Africa, then suddenly in this uh, room of coaches, I'm now looking over at Andrew Goodman with a touch more interest. Yeah, very much so. I think one real obvious improvement in Leinster's game since Goodman's come in has been their launch plays, their strike plays. And you think of that try they got against Leicester when Ross Byrne took it up to the line and... uh, was it Hugo Keane was put away by um, the Blightside winner? I think. Was it Jimmy O'Brien? Yes. yes it was O'Brien, yeah. That looked to me like a classic Goodman move. And uh, what he, I think he's really brought something extra to Leinster's attack this season. He comes very highly recommended. Obviously, he's worked with the Crusaders, which, are, like I said earlier, are the outstanding non-test side in the Southern Hemisphere. And he was their attack coach there. And he'd only been a couple of years, though. So for, that, that was every bit as much of a coup, really, as getting Lancaster or Nienabra. This just shows you where Le- Leinster operate now. They just go after the best. And mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure they went after Scotty Robertson, even though they denied it. I mean, I think they would just they would say they can go after anybody they want because they're Leinster now. And uh, Goodman, I, yeah, I, that's the way I'm reading it as well, Joe. I think Goodman will have a little bit more, even more of a say. I, I'd imagine be one of divvied up between him and Ninia to do an awful lot of the on-field coaching with Leo Cullen overseeing everything but that's the way I'm seeing it but who knows it, it, they, the statement didn't actually specify their exact roles maybe that's still to that will work itself out in due course but no doubt they have a plan and yeah. a good one What's your sense Fiona? Yeah I think uh, Jerry's right I think it looks like it's going to go that way I mean if you have Goodman there just like how could you not use them having worked with the Crusaders and you know as Jerry said you can see a, a slight change in those strike plays all options are on it's exciting you're seeing um, a kind of faster pace attack and you know uh, Leinster have always done that but you can je- definitely see Goodman and that 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 footprint from that side of the world Ga- guys are taking it up to the line getting their hands free there's it's it's an exciting brand and rugby and if, if he's there you would imagine he will immediately step into that role because Stuart Lancaster was immense and you know it's the on it's the on field stuff I suppose that is probably drawn Neenberg to the role as well you know obviously he's not going to be named as the head coach but I would imagine he'll be heavily influenced in that with Leo has built such a great capacity for the capacity for those coaches there that they feel wanted and you know to to not have that attached to their name but obviously do all that on field stuff he, he's built up a great system with the guys he's got there and especially if Sean O'Brien's going to try and become more involved as well in that side of things and Fiona, how would you compare the Munster defence under Nina Barr to what Leinster employ currently? Yeah, look, it's it's you know like the Munster defence back then. Obviously, it's different types of players. Um, there'd still be an imprint of that defence that we've seen from Leinster. It, like Leo isn't going to have him change many peaks in it, but I think it's from that Munster period. I think what you used to see is he does have a kind of an aggressive style coming up, and I think Leinster employ that as well. And obviously, as as they go to the sidelines, he has that floating over. But one big thing is, I, I suppose, when a coach is coming in, and yeah, you might be handed. Def- defence and you'll have your own ideas around that but it will also have have to fit into the systems that are already in place because Leinster's defence has been outstanding the last couple of seasons but he'll probably tweak a, a couple of things and it could be in, in little areas offset piece, off strike plays from opposition and different areas like that but I, I think he's probably expanded how he defends as well with South Africa, I mean they're a big physical team so he'll just look at the players and, and he'll never see what he can do with, with the Leinster players that are there. Yeah, they just keep layering excellence on excellence with each uh, coaching ticket building on the last. So the rich get richer. Um, <laughs> lines 36, Leinster, 39 seniors were talking Leinster mm-hmm. at altitude in Johannesburg. 
Uh, I know we'll, we'll come to the game in a second. Leinster 15 points behind at one stage. But I suppose Sam Prendergast is the headline story at 20 years of age. He has taken everything in his stride from Irish under-20s Grand Slam win and Sonny Bill Williams tweeting about his offloads to the world to a Leinster debut in South Africa. Like I said, 15 points down and a win. Man of the match, URC player of the weekend, kicked 14 points, including the winning kick, the last kick of the game singing in the dressing room afterwards. Is there anything else from Sam Prendergast weekend that he needs to tick off here, Jerry? <laughs> this is a bit insane, really, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, not only is he ridiculously gifted, but he seems to be uber composed as well, almost like a Dan Carter type temperament well, or something I, like I that. I thought during the 20s, mm. his body language yes. screamed, yeah. kids, yeah. daddy's yeah. here, yeah. I'm in charge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, 20? Are you really only 20? Yeah. Is this really only your debut? You're having us on, aren't you? Mm. I mean... He has a little bit of a Stephen Larkham type style in that kind of languid, upright, that extended arms passing style. He puts great pace on the passes. He picks out his passes very well. Tony Smead, the long serving Trinity head coach, told me about this guy over a year ago. He said, Jerry, this is the most mm-hmm. talented, gifted, young Irish out half I've ever seen come through the system at that age. He really did. He just raved about him. Right. So I've been watching him closely ever since because Tony's a really, really good judge and uh, he's just on the money. I... I didn't expect him to be that good in his debut away in South Africa at an attitude. I mean, apart from one sliced kick, I'm struggling to think of anything he did wrong. His decision-making, he got a couple of try assists, he picks out his passes really well, he just seemed to ooze composure. You thought maybe he'd be coming off before the end, but you're glad that he, st- that he stayed on. I, I think also, you know, in, in all the excitement, understandable about Sam Pendergast, and one other great thing about him, his timing, the timing of his career to come into the Leinster setup just as Johnny Sexton is hanging up his boots. Like, you could have been a great out half for the last 10, 15 years or like being a great outside centre in the yeah. time of Brian O'Driscoll or a great lock in the time of Paul O'Connell. But it's very, it's particularly good timing oh, like, to come along. In to, the, the, <laughs> to the week. To the week, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I was, I was going to say that. Yeah, oh yeah, one other thing. In the, in the understandable fuss about Sam Prendergast uber composed and mightily effective all round performance and yeah. how well he oozed at 20 years of age on his debut Chris Cosgrave I thought was outstanding as oh, well Oh at 15 scored a try as well yeah. That footwork for that yeah. try and what won the game as much as any other moment in the match was that 50-22 he kicked and I don't think I've ever seen a better execution of a 50-22 from inside his own half one bounce within five of the opposition corner flag yeah. and the winner was actually wasn't that far out of place. It just had, it had to be on the proverbial sixpence. And the other thing I liked about that was that um, Sam Pentecost passed a tomb when most out halves would have kicked himself. But by doing that, he gave Cosgrave a better angle for the 50 22. That led to the multi phase attack, which led to the top over penalty, which won the match. I don't know whether it was pre called by Cosgrave, give it to me, I'll have a go. But either way, it was just very intelligent play by both of them. Like these are kids. I mean, Cosgrave might have to improve his physicality and defence a little yeah. bit, but he's yeah. got real X factor. That finish was outstanding. Cosgrove. Isn't Cosgrove, it? sorry. Cosgrove, yeah. It's all right. A lot of kids coming at you to get used to all of a sudden. Here we go again. Um, <laughs> so, Fiona, let's start with Prendergast. Uh, the way Jerry's talked about him there, even if people didn't see the game, they'll be inclined to go back and watch it now. This is very exciting. Yeah, so exciting for Leinster. I mean, he, I was looking at Charlie Tector in, in the last couple of years and he just seems to have come out of nowhere now and, you know, to, to start such a huge, a huge game and everything Jerry said is on the money. But what impressed me watching back the game was his physicality in defence. He he actually gets up, reminded me a little bit of Johnny Sexton defensively. He's getting into the nitty gritties. A lot of the time when the balls was spilled at Rocks or, or there was a couple of knock-ons and by the lines, you could see it was Sam Prendergast trying to dive in that ball and 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 retrain possession he has I know he's only a young guy he absolutely seems to have no fear when it comes to the physicality because he's such a little baby face when you're watching him out there but he he was just so composed and you know even even his kick and game Jerry spoke about that slice he still even cleared his lines and he was so annoyed with himself because he mightn't have got the distance he wanted he's a beautiful kick of that mm. spiral kick he uses he varies up his kick and techniques as well and just looks so relaxed Relaxed and constantly, I, I specifically watched the game with a view of looking at him. And in the backfield, you can see him constantly talking to the forwards, to his back line. He's just got that 10 arrogance, maybe not an arrogance, but you know, that control that you want your 10 to have. A presence, to just be isn't it, Fiona? It's a presence. A, a pr- exactly, yeah. a presence, yeah, not the that. money, and it makes 
makes you so comfortable to play when you have a player like that around mm. you and to be as good at that as obviously he's coming off the back at that Grand Slam with the with Ireland 20s but to have a player to just step in at a Leinster level and be able to do that was just great for Leinster Yeah that's a good point his confidence is on a high so it's a good time for him to give him a day but nothing to lose and they use this tour very well There you go that was uh, but a taste of the full rugby conversation as usual you can get the full chat wherever you get your podcast it's waiting for you right now